Do you want to consolidate multiple Excel files with multiple sheets? I'm going to show you two methods, one where your data is fine, one where your data is a bit tricky, and they're about five minutes each. So what do I mean by this? Well, let's take a look. So we're starting off with annual files, for example, and in those annual files are monthly sheets. Terrible way to set up your data, but it's reality sometimes. And we just want to consolidate all this data into one nice table. Power Query is going to do it for us. It's a few clicks. If your data is nice and organized, it's pretty straightforward. There's a little bit of custom function building, a few minutes of work, if your data needs a bit of tidying up, such as getting rid of unwanted headings, unpivoting the data, etc. Okay, let's go. So we're starting here with a concept of having a folder called multi sheets, multi files, and I've got an annual dump of data. This could be anything, right? Just consistent files. In this case, I've got a sheet for each month, okay, January, February, March, April, and so on. I've also got a sheet with some random stuff in that I don't want to consolidate. So as long as your files are set up consistently, this will work nicely. So what do we do? So here's my new file, and I'm simply going to go data, get data from file, from folder. Now, if your files are on SharePoint, same technique, except for the starting point about how you connect to the folder. I've got a video for that. Check out the description. I'll make sure I put a link in there. So from folder, and there's a couple of little tricks I'm going to show you. So I'm going to my folder, multi-sheet, multi-files. Bit weird that it doesn't show anything, but you're connected to the folder. It's the next screen that shows you the content. Okay. Now, I've actually got one of those files open. I need to close it. That's what that little squiggle means. It's a temp file. Uh, we'll come across that in a second. Now, if you are only consolidating one sheet from every workbook, my recommendation is go combine, combine and transform and follow those steps. Again, I've got a video on that. This is about multi-sheet consolidation, which involves one or two extra steps. So transform data instead. So this is the starting point. Notice that this file has got a squiggle in front of it. That means it's open somewhere. So one thing you might want to do to prevent that being an issue in the future is to apply a filter of does not start with the little tilde symbol. Okay. Um, I'm just going to take one second to go and close that Excel file and then I'll come back. Okay, so this is my starting point. Now, you don't click this combine content. What you do, add column, custom column, and we're going to add Excel workbook. Okay. So here we go. If I type in Excel, it should pop up excel.workbook. Open the bracket. Double click on content, which is the name of this column here. And close the bracket. And we click OK. And that adds this little table. And if I click on that little table, you can see the various sheets the random stuff, the unwanted table, they're all in here. So all I really need is that column. Okay. And let's go for the name. It's actually got the year in it, which I want to use for later on. Right click, remove other columns. Now, because I clicked on them in that order, they're sorted in that order. I can change the name around there. It doesn't matter. Okay. So then I expand this out. And I don't really need everything here. I need the name of the sheet and the kind of thing it is and the actual data as well. Those are the three things I need. I unticked use original column name. And here we go. We've now got for 2023, 2024, 2025, all the sheets, including the random stuff and the unwanted tables. And see here it says sheet and this is a table. So that's the name of the table in that sheet. 
So we've got all the things we need. I just want to get rid of the stuff I don't. So it depends on how you want to do this. You could remove the things you don't want. You could just click on the drop down and tick the things you do want. Now check this out. If I untick random stuff and unwanted table, I've unticked two things. Okay, and it's put in the formula where name one doesn't equal random stuff. If you want to sort of select more things or you want to be specific about what you want to pick, then you can just do it a different way. Okay, pick the items you want to keep. All right, so there we go. Good to have a naming convention in your sheets as well if you can. So that's a great start. We simply then need to expand out. You know, I don't need this kind. I didn't really need it in the first place, but I could have filtered out tables perhaps or filtered out named ranges or whatever you want to you know, access. So I can then expand out and look, it says column one, column two, column three, column four. So let me just show you what happens here because there's a little trick. If I expand this out, it's actually working, right? I've now consolidated multiple data from multiple sheets, but the column headings uh, are not right. Okay, there's a, well, they're right, but they're repeated over and over again. Now you could promote them, filter them out, etc. but that's a trick. Check this little sneaky trick out. If I go back to the added custom step, and up here it says Excel workbook dot content, or content, check this out. You can put a little comma in there, and it says use headers as any, and if you say true, it'll promote the headers automatically. So now when I go down to filtered row, rows and expanded data, I'm just gonna delete that a second. So I'm back here to the filtered row step. Now when I go to the expand, it's got the names in there. I don't need column four. Click okay, done. Sneaky little step. And honestly, we're pretty much there, okay? All I wanna do is create a little date column and this isn't anything to do with a consolidation type thing. This is just taking the year from here and adding it onto the month there. So I am going to click on January, control click on name. So I've got both columns highlighted. Right click on name, add column from examples. Okay, and because I selected those two columns, They've got a little tick in the box. See, name's got a tick in the box there. And name's got a tick in the box here. So it's gonna use both those columns then for to look at when I type in 01, okay, January, which is the name in that over the other side, 2023, which is the name in this column. And if I press enter, it sort of looks like it works. Okay, but you've always got to check this stuff. Ah, no, look, February 2023, if I scroll across, it's got the February bit right, but it's put in 2023. And if I look at the formula, it's saying 01 plus the name one plus 2023, not what I want. So I give it a different example. Okay, this row, 2024, enter. And then look at the formula, 01 plus name one, plus text.start, the first four characters of the name column. Beautiful, okay? I'll call this date and I'll click okay. And we're pretty much done. I just want the date. I would like the name, the product and the units. Right click, remove other columns. Okay. Looking pretty good. Control A to select all. Transform the tech data type. It's got a date, it's got name two. Let's just call that name product units. Pretty good. And just to show off, we can go right click, transform month, end of month. I love that little feature. You don't have to do that, but I just like showing that's possible. Okay, perfect. And then we've got it. So we go home, close and load. Okay. You would have close and load two as an option. I previously closed out of it to get rid of that you know, open spreadsheet from earlier. So what would normally happen is you would have this little screen pop up. You would say table or add to the data model. You can do exactly the, all this in Power BI as well. 
okay? If you're gonna use the Power BI data model, you could use the Excel data model. I'm not gonna do that for now. I'm just gonna say, hey, into an existing worksheet, click OK. And there's my data consolidated. Okay, what if your data is trickier? Let me open it up, let me show you. So each sheet now has an unwanted heading, the data's laid out badly, there's still some random stuff in there to get rid of, okay? Each file has got that unwanted heading, okay? So what do we do in this case? All right, so let's give it a go. We're gonna go data, get data, from file, from folder. This time we're going to go to the trickier folder, click open. Don't click combine, click transform. The start of this is the same as the previous one, okay? So this is now the trickier one. So we're gonna go add column, custom column, Excel workbook. I'm not gonna do the headers true because my first row is not the heading row. That was an unwanted header. So I'm not gonna bother with that true bit here. Okay, and I've got that column. So if I go over here and say, that, okay, give me the name column and give me the custom column, right click, remove other columns, I'm good. Now I'm gonna make this my starter. So this is gonna be my source. Okay, and I wanna sort of run a little routine. So if I open this up, just like this, and I said, give me the data, give me the name, I don't want the kind, remember I didn't need that, hidden sheets I don't need, I don't need item, just the name and the data, that'll do. Okay, I don't want this random stuff, so I'm just going to put a little filter on here. Okay, I don't want the random, I don't want the unwanted table. Great, okay, so this is my starting point. But my data is very messy. So I, if I just simply click the expand button, I've got all these columns, I click OK, I've got a big mess with all different column headings potentially, all these nulls, awful, right? So that's not what we're going to do. We are going to start with that. We're going to right click and reference it. Then we're going to build a little query that tidies up one sheet. Click a couple of buttons to turn it into a function and then apply that function to every sheet to tidy them all up. All right, a few minutes. So this is going to be called my query cleanup. We're going to have a function cleanup as well that's linked to this. Don't worry, it'll make sense. So here we go. We're actually going to go into this first table. Click in there. And I'm now tidying up this first query, okay? Source zero means basically the first record in here. That's record zero, that's record one from the data column, okay? So if I go back here, source zero from the data column. So, you know, you can do your normal power query tidying up steps. I'm going to assume that it's always the first two rows I want to remove. Risky, there's other ways of doing this, but let's just make it simple for now. So remove top rows. Great. Then use first row as headers. Okay, that's looking good. I don't want the change type step. Don't need that. I don't want to hard code in these headings in case they're different in the future. And then right click unpivot other columns to flip all those products around. So attribute actually becomes product and value is actually the units. Perfect, okay? So that's my little routine, my cleanup routine. I need to turn this into a function to apply against every sheet. So how do I do that? Well, the thing I need to pass it is this navigation step, okay? Record zero, I want it to clean it up. Record one, I want it to clean it up. Record two. So I want to pass in like a list, a one, a two, a three, and have it run every time. So essentially what it'll then do 
is go down here, clean up that table, record zero, clean up that table, record one. It'll apply the same steps to each one. Hopefully that makes sense. Watch along and it'll make sense towards the end. Okay, so how do you do that? Well, to pass in or to parameterize this zero and pass in a little number, you've got to go to manage parameters. Okay, so new parameter. I'll just call this uh, source data row. It is going to be a, a decimal number. It's really going to be a whole number, but there is no option. And the current value is zero. And we click OK. So that's just created a little parameter. All right. Where are we going with this? Bear with me. So all we do is we go back into our query. Essentially, this is the first step before you can turn this into a function. We're only a couple of clicks away. There's not a lot of code. So we go into here. We go to the navigation step. We go to source where it says zero. And we say source data row. OK. And we press enter. And all we're doing is passing a zero in here. So nothing changes. Looks identical. OK. But now we've done that, we can do something special. We can right click on the query and create a function. You can only do this if you've added a parameter into your query. So create a function, call it fn cleanup. Nice to have the names the same because they're, they're linked essentially. Click OK. And now it's put this little folder in for me with this function in here. Great, so what do I do with that? Well, I go back to my source, right click reference. I'm not gonna load that source. I'm gonna say connection only. This is the one I'm gonna load. So this is gonna be called my file trickier output. That's gonna be the table I'm gonna actually put into Excel. So all I wanna pass it is a row number. So I'm gonna go add column, index column. So there's my zero, one, two, three. Now there are ways, you don't have to necessarily reference this. All I need is this column. There's fancy ways of doing it, but this is nice and simple. Okay, so there's my little index column. And I'm then simply gonna go to invoke custom function. And we're a couple of clicks away. So invoke, the function I wanna invoke is called function cleanup, the source Basically, my parameter is going to come from the index column. Okay. And then I click OK. And in each of these tables is my beautiful cleaned up data. So good. So all I need to do then is take that column and this column. And then finally, this column. Right click, remove other columns, and then expand out this one. Click OK. And we have now got our process. And we could do the same thing to grab the date. We could highlight those two columns, use column from examples. And then we can load this data to the Excel sheet using home. I would recommend close and load to connection only. Okay, step one, connection only, because you do not want to load this query cleanup, that source data row, that function. You only want to load the output. So go connection only first. Then over on the right hand side, go to the output sheet, right click load to and load it to a table or the data model or whatever. I'll go to a new worksheet for this one and click OK. And there's my cleaned up data. All right, hope you find that really useful. You might like this Power Query playlist and other content I've done. Share this with others, like and subscribe, get in there before the first 100,000 subscribers, and I'll catch you in the next video.